Welcome to Hindsight Semi-Evergreen. I'm Damian Musiani, and here's your news. Leading off, best-selling author of The Lovely Bones, Alice Siebold, is officially rattled. Her memoir, entitled Lucky, which detailed her life after being raped as a freshman at Syracuse University, was all set to be adapted into a Hollywood movie, with actress Victoria Pedretti tapped to play Siebold herself. But it all fell apart due to just one tiny problem. The man she sent to prison for 16 years was innocent. In 1982, Anthony Broadwater was convicted for Siebold's rape and since his release has had to live with a virtual scarlet R on his chest, carrying the stigma and isolation of being a registered sex offender and felon for the last two decades. We hear these kinds of cold case stories more and more these days, but in this case, it was the proposed movie's adaptation itself that led to Broadwater's exoneration. Executive producer Tim Muccianti was set to finance the film's production until he noticed discrepancies between Siebold's memoir and the shooting script. Muccianti was so disturbed by what he read that he dropped out of the project and paid for a private investigator to examine the evidence used to convict Broadwater, which ultimately led to a court petition and a vacated conviction. Seabold issued an apology that hopefully was not crafted by a PR firm. I mean, she is a writer, after all. And let's not discount that somebody sexually assaulted her and scarred her for life. But she did sell an innocent man down the river and then sold one million copies of her book about it. Lucky has now been pulled from publication by its distributor since, you know, it's suddenly full of lies. In our opinion, Broadwater is due some lucky and lovely cash, ASAP. Who's not lucky or lovely? CNN. The cable news stalwart continues to pay for its employees' incompetence and corruption after they finally, reluctantly, suspended anchor Chris Cuomo for ignoring all journalistic integrity by sharing inside information with his brother, the former governor of New York, to help him fight sexual harassment allegations last year. What is interesting is that CNN boss Jeff Zucker waited until incriminating text messages were made public by the New York Attorney General's office before taking action. Kind of a role reversal, since traditionally it's the news organization that tips off law enforcement, not the other way around. You know, like in All the President's Men. CNN reporters can't even find the news in their own building. Of course, we all know Cuomo will be back on the air after the holidays, right? This is the same CNN that gave former Governor Elliot Spitzer his own TV show, not once, but twice, after he was forced to resign in disgrace for spending New York taxpayer dollars on high-priced hookers. This is from the current CNN website, by the way. He still has his own page up on there, even though his show was canceled in 2011. And Zucker certainly believes in giving second chances, evidenced earlier this year when legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin was forgiven for giving his colleagues a free joystick tutorial on Zoom. Talk about a staff infection. All that's missing is Jeff Zucker's memoir. Maybe Alice Siebold can ghostwrite it. Here's the title, Zucky. One Man's War Against Journalism. And that's your news. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with Fresh Hindsight.